the Utah Hockey Club get the steal of the draft. Plus, they continue their success by going out and trading for a top defenseman in Mikhail Sergachev. And we're going to break Utah's draft day down for you guys coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. So, with that said, let's just jump right into the first topic of the video today, which is the steal of the draft. And yes... I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this, and that is Jerome Aginla's son, Tej Aginla, has been drafted 6th overall by the Utah Hockey Club, and I'm a very, very big fan of this pick, and I think this may be the steal of the draft when it's all said and done. If we just look at this guy's stats this year in Kelowna, he had 84 points in the regular season, putting up 47 goals and 37 assists. And if you look at that year-to-year -year improvement, I mean, it is Jurassic. Going from 18 points to 84 is something you never see in the juniors. It's so big that this guy just came out, had the season of his career, and then goes and gets drafted just outside the top five at the sixth pick, and he was a playoff beast for Kelowna as well with 15 points and Mark. I mean, this is amazing. Seeing, you know, a Hall of Famer's kid, uh, you know, now in the NHL, but I mean, Tish has made a name for himself. He's not just, you know, Jerome McGinley's son. I mean, going from 18 points to 84 points in one year is insane. And he it's very well deserved for him to go to Utah here. Yeah, listen, I think Utah did incredible with this selection. I mean, with the Ginland, we see this guy, not only can he score for himself, not only can he create for others, but this guy is a big body that uses his body as well. He'll go into corners, he'll use his body to retrieve pucks, to battle for pucks. He'll use his body in every aspect of the game to put the edge towards him. This is an incredible pick for Utah as their first ever a pick in the NHL draft. He's going to be a star in this league. Seeing former players' kids on the Utah team, we have Shane Doan's kid there, Jerome McGinley's kid there now. It's going to be a huge future for this Utah organization. And it seems like they're really taking with what they have and what they were given from the Arizona Coyotes, and I'm sorry, Coyotes fans, but the Utah team is doing incredible so far. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, this is, like you said it perfectly, this is a great selection for their first ever draft pick. I mean, getting Tish Aginla here at number six, you know, a lot of people may, it, some people expected him to slip maybe to Calgary, but I wasn't on that train. But uh, I think this is an incredible pick by Utah. Getting, you know, a familiar name within the hockey scene with Aginla on the back of your jersey. But like, like we said, I mean, this guy is a player in his own right. He's a... A big body, like you said, who can go out there, put points on the board, score goals, get assists. He can do it all. And this is the perfect selection to make for Utah because this is definitely the player of the future for them. Up there with Logan Cooley and, and Doan and all these guys, Dylan Gunther. They have so many young prospects now getting from, from Arizona, like you said, now in Utah. And this team is set up for the future, and I can't wait to see all these guys start, you know, getting some chemistry together, because it's going to be unreal up there in Utah. Yeah, because that top prospect pool, like you said, Cooley, Doan, again, this could be the line of the future. We could be looking at this in five, six, seven years' time and saying it's the most dominant line in NHL history. They all have played well. They're all looking like legitimate stars going into this league. Obviously, we've already seen Cooley in the league. Doan played at the tail end of Arizona's uh, season last year and looked incredible. And with the Gimla, I do think he gets another year in the juniors. But when he does get into this lineup, he's going to be injected into this top six in a role that's going to make him just a promising young talent coming in with at this point is going to be opening up for Utah's window. So it is quite exciting. I think again, is going to be incredible once he gets into the league. He's going to continue developing in the juniors as well. And Utah fans, be excited because again, is going to be the real deal. Yeah, 100%. I mean, this is a great way to start your franchise. You get to sell some jerseys with his name on the back of it. Whenever they, whenever they come out with the team name, I'm really eager to see what they're going to be this season. I really hope it's not the Utah Hockey club i want to see the yetis or whatever it is but it's the perfect way to start your franchise and i'm really excited for this club because i think they got the steal of the draft here at number six i know it's kind of you know 
it might be out there to say that number six is the steal of the draft but when we come back in a couple of years time a couple of years down the road and we look back on this draft i think we'll have a Ginla up a little bit higher than the sixth overall selection but Utah didn't end their draft day there. They went out uh, this morning and traded for two great defensemen. And that's our next topic of video, which is Utah bolsters their blue line. And I mean... What a, what a way to start your franchise by going out, drafting such a, a highly touted prospect, and then going out and making two blockbuster trades. I mean, they might have had the draft of the, of the day here, the draft of the year, by just getting this player and by getting these trades. And the first trade they actually went out and got here uh, was Mikhail Sergachev. I mean, this guy has been a dominant defenseman for the Tampa Bay Lightning during his time there. They went out, got him for J.J. Moser, Connor Geeky, and pick number 199 uh, in this draft. And I think that this is pretty huge for the Utah Hockey Club. I mean, if we just look at Mikhail Sergachev's stats here last year, obviously he did deal with injury, didn't play as many games as people would have liked in Tampa, but he did go for 34 games last year, putting up 19 points, where he had 36 hits, 69 shots. And the one thing about Mikhail Sergachev is how young he still is. He's still 26 years of age, averaging 22 minutes time on ice. This is obviously the defenseman of the future here for the Utah Hockey Club. And I mean, Mark, what are your initial thoughts on this Mikhail Sergachev? Sergachev trade to Utah. I think it's an awesome pickup. We're really seeing this Utah management not taking the Coyotes route of wanting to save money, not spending money. They're all in on building this team, and it seems like they're sick of being in this race of, are they going to get the first pick, the third pick, the eighth pick? They want to start competing, and picking up Sergachev is the perfect piece. We see Sergachev coming on to a second year of his $8.5 million deal. I believe it's a seven-year deal, so you're going to have him for the entirety of his prime. This is a guy that has bought a battle many times with the Tampa Bay Lightning in the playoffs. We've seen him hoist the Stanley Cup. He's still young. He has the experience. He has more upside. This is going to be their top left-handed defenseman for the future. I understand why Tampa moved on from him. They needed to bring back people. Victor Hedman's looking for an extension. Steven Stamkos almost winning a free agency as we're going to probably see him re-sign with Tampa. But it seems like Utah pounced on this. They have the salary cap. Salary cap trumps all. Having the extra salary cap to take on players like this when teams need to get on out from under contracts is the perfect game and we're going to see circuit just dominate he's going to go in immediately as their top left-handed defenseman maybe they draft a right-handed defenseman for the future maybe they look at one in free agency but all i know is Sergachev is the best blue liner they have right now and it's going to be quite exciting to see him get this fresh start on utah where he kind of controls the pace on this back end yeah and he can definitely get it done that way i mean we've seen him control the pace of games uh in tampa so now seeing him get that top line being the number one defenseman creating the offense from the blue line uh, is really going to be great for Utah. I think fans uh, of this team are going to fall in love with Sergachev because we've really seen him develop over his time in Tampa. I mean, once a Montreal Canadiens prospect, I wish we still had him. But, I mean, this guy is amazing. He's got a very good shot from back there as well. He's not afraid to rip it on net. He also can get it done on the defensive side of the puck. And like you said, this is a perfect defenseman to start your franchise with. But they didn't stop there they went out and got another defenseman and if we just take a look here they went out and got John Marino from the New Jersey Devils for pick 49 uh in the second round uh and he, they got John Marino and pick 153 uh going Utah's way here and I mean John Marino isn't nobody to glance over either. I mean, this guy is a, a phenomenal defenseman in his own right. And if we just take a look at his stats this season, I mean, oh my God. 75 games, he had four goals, 21 assists for 25 points, averaging about 21 minutes time on ice. 27 years old, so still young, still in the prime of his career. He had 39 hints, and this year he blocked 89 shots. I mean... This is big. This is huge. This is a huge day in the history of the franchise for Utah. I mean, getting two big defensemen here to start out uh, fresh in a new city it, it is so big for this club, Mark. 
Yeah, because the big thing is, John Marino, this is a guy I actually wanted the Vancouver Canucks to go after. It seems like Utah jumped in. They wanted this guy. He's the right-handed defenseman that can play with Sergachev. He's great at getting the puck out of his zone, which is transition. He's a good passer. He's not going to go out and put you up 60 points, but he's going to go out and play a complete game for the team. I know the Devils needed to clear cap space to bring in free agents, to re-sign people, to make room for making trades. But it seems like Utah really took advantage. Like I said, this salary cap that no one has that Utah had a boatload of, this is what they're using to their advantage, moving out draft picks to bring in pieces now. This could be a guy they could resign in the future, a guy they could flip at deadline if needed. But John Marino or, is a great pickup for this team. And I think him and Sergeyev will complement each other very well. Yeah, 100%. I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, Utah has a good roster now. I, I think that, you know, Arizona Coyote fans are going to be a little bit salty because they could never do it while they were in the desert. But now moving up to Utah, it looks like this team is really set up for the future. I mean, if I just look at it here on my phone, I mean, they got Clayton Keller. They got Schmaltz. They got Sergachev now. Aginla, Doan, Cooley, Marino, Michelli, Ingram, and Dylan Gunther. I mean, when you talk about all... All of these players uh, just being on your team and all these young players that we listed that I just listed still developing still becoming great NHL players I mean the future of Utah is looking very very bright it might take a couple of years but we're gonna see Utah in the playoffs yeah, I'm going to put a bold takeout. I don't think we're going to see the season unless they go out and make huge ads in this play uh, uh, off season. But I think next season, not this season coming, but the following one, I think we're going to see Utah push for a playoff spot. This might be the final wild card spot. This could be second or third in the division. But I think Utah is building something with some veterans bringing in guys like, like we said, Sergeyev that has won a Stanley Cup bringing in some vets and still building around this young core of draft picks of players they've already had coming over from Arizona. Arizona once said Logan Cooley was the best prospect in the world. It's time for him to show that. I think we're going to see a huge jump from Utah in the next two years, and it's going to be a matter of time before Utah finally makes the playoffs for the first time in history. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I have to agree with you there. I don't think it's that bold of a take. I don't think they make it this season. Unless, like you said, they go out after a big fish here in free agency, which they very well could. I mean, with what we're seeing here today, I never really expected to look at my phone and see Utah trade for two defensemen today, two stud defensemen at that. So who knows what's to come over this summer for Utah. Maybe they're just saying, hey, let's do it. Let's just put put the push on right now and try to get in the playoffs our first year as a franchise and uh, I'm really excited for this Utah team I mean I, I like the Coyotes team I was always you know kind of rooting for the Coyotes silently I thought I really liked this roster a lot love the young talent they got and now by adding these two defensemen another great prospect in Tija Ginla it really looks like the Utah Hockey Club is set up in the right position for success so Utah fans get hyped get excited because you got a team coming to your city but we want to hear your guys thoughts on Utah's draft day down below in the comment section we'd love to hear from you guys but we're gonna get into everybody's favorite topic of the video which is comment of the day and the comment of the day today uh, goes to Pat G. Shout out our guy Pat G Mafia here on the channel. Day one supporter. He says 5k is on the way. And Pat, uh, if you could predict the future, I'd love to see 5k here on the channel. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, you want to keep up to date on everything that's to come this offseason. So make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button while you're down there, like the video. It helps push these videos out to all the hockey fans here on YouTube. And comment on the video. You might be featured on the next uh, comment of the day. Just like our good buddy Patchy Mafia here. And if you want to check out the video uh, we did yesterday. It'll be popping up on your screen right now. But as always, I've been your host KC. Along with my co-host Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.